Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica here at my favorite gym, Gambate Fitness in Los Angeles, California. And today we are going to do bar horizontal wide grip rows. You do not have to secure your bar to the rack to do this drill, but it very much helps. We have videos on securing the bar to the rack. Anything will really work as long as it's not moving. It doesn't have to be perfect every time, especially for this drill. For this drill, there are a bunch of factors that you can control. You can control the height of the bar. The lower the bar, the harder it is. You can control your leg position. We're gonna do the simplest version of this drill first. Get down underneath the bar, hands wide on this one. There are little stripes on the bar. I'm gonna put a pinky on one side, a pinky on the other side, so that every time I come back to the bar, I know that my hands are the same distance apart find a mark, that's why barbells have marks on them. From here, we are going to feet flat on the ground, drive our hips up towards the sky, and then pull. You're gonna to have to adjust where your feet are. The goal is to pull the bar to center chest line. Very, very simple drill. It has a very specific purpose. The purpose of this drill is to prepare people to do more advanced types of pulling later. I use this drill a lot for circus athletes. A lot of the stuff that I do in circus arts, aerial has a close grip. Think of it like climbing a rope. So we have a very specific angle that we fire our lats at when we do those types of activities. This is a great drill for aerialists to warm up with because it is firing the muscles, but in a totally different angle. The angle is determined by how wide your hands are. I like a wide grip on a warm-up drill like this because all of the sports that I do in climbing are close grip. So we're doing the same muscle groups at opposite angles for the warm-up. You can change the variables on this drill. Change the height of the bar. The lower the bar is, the harder it is. And we can go from bent legs to straight legs. So we're gonna lower the bar real quick just to show the variability. Put in 16. Once you reset the height of your bar, re-wrap so that the bar doesn't move around on you. We're not pulling on this bar super hard right now, so the wrap doesn't need to be super duper tight. It just needs to be tight enough to keep it from moving off the rack. Now that we have our bar at a new height, get down, set your hands. That's what the marks on the bar are for. Sit all the way down. On the first rep, you're gonna to have to adjust the position of your feet. Pull somewhere mid pec line with feet flat on the ground. Drive your hips up towards the sky. Crush your rib cage down, your abs should be on. And this is a more high rep activity because it's relatively easier to do. If you wanna make it harder, then you can start making it straight legs. So, legs out in front, drive your hips up, straight leg, and pull. Think of this like a plank, but chest up instead of chest down. Now you're gonna hold that plank by squeezing your glutes the entire time. This is an excellent prep drill for people who can't do pull-ups yet. Everybody can do pull-ups, you just have to build into it one step at a time. And then you can change the height of your legs. We can put up a box, a stack of plates, anything like that. Get ourselves into position, feet on target, squeeze up, and then pull. <sighs> then the variable is the height of the box. If your feet are building up above the height of the bar, then you're really doing it. So there's a lot of variables here and you can track all of them in order to get better at pulling with your upper body in ways that benefit further training into pull-ups or into circus arts or whatever later on. The most important thing here is no saggy hips. When you're in position, if your hips are high, that's right. If your hips start to drop, it is less ideal. Less ideal. There is an L version of this exercise later on, but think of this version as a flat body version, knee, hip, shoulder in one line. Rep count is entirely up to the athlete. That's what coaches do, is they pick a rep count and they pick a number of sets and they figure out how to change that target over time. Classic nerd math strategy would be to pick a doable number at the 60 to 80% range. You could do a test. 
max out, see how many you can do. Take 60% of that number, take 80% of that number, and then do volume cycles. Two days a week at 60%, two days a week at 80%. The 80% should be two thirds of the volume of the 60% day, and then add volume, which means add sets. So the intensity is not changing. You're building up your neurological coordination and building up your work capacity. And then after four to six weeks, you could retest your max and then pick a new 60 and 80%. Simple math, but it definitely works out and it will move you towards an ability to do pull-ups in the future.